Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech DIY. This time uh, we brought a very exciting playground session. Uh, we are covering Spring Boot, MongoDB, and yes, you can see by looking at the colorful templates on the screen and uh, beautiful buttons and everything. So, yes, this time we are trying our hands uh, on UI part and we are using React.js for that. And uh, yeah, since this session is going to be a bigger one, uh, it's almost around one hour, uh, more than one hour 40 minutes plus. So what we have done is we have marked the key moments and uh, we are going to provide those key, mom key pointers uh, in the description section of the video. So you can skip at any time and you can, uh, you know, you can go to that particular session and you can uh, watch the video from there. So let's suppose if you already know about Spring Boot uh, and MongoDB com combination, so you can directly jump to React.js or vice versa. If you know React.js and you just want to see the backend, uh, so you can uh, simply switch, uh, go to that particular uh, key moment and you can uh, see that. And uh, the, here we are going to write a blog, uh, a blogger application. Uh, we are going to have the CRUD operation, create, update, read and delete. And as uh, usual, as we usually do in all our playground sessions, we uh, write the code uh, then and there. And if any issue comes across, uh, we go back to the, uh, we go back to Google and uh, try to find out the solution and uh, we will provide the solution here and uh, that way we are going to cover uh, all the things here so and uh, here since it is a bigger session so watch out for those uh, those uh, key moments and definitely there are more since uh, react we are trying for the you know uh, very new we are very new to react so that's where we have found so many css issues so in your journey also you may find such issues initially definitely and so yeah so with that uh, with that as you can see all the functionalities are there new blog you can write update you can do delete you can do so and toastify we have used for showing the really nice looking messages okay enough of descriptions let's get our hands dirty by going to the playground and yep let's get started so in the initial setup uh, for the backend uh, this is the page our start.spring.io page we are using maven dependency java 8 jar packaging we are using spring web lombok and mongodb spring data mongodb uh, those are the dependencies we are going to have and uh, yeah we have uh, we have uh, generated the project there and downloaded it and now we are going to import that into our intellij idea and the project name this time we are giving example dash spring crud dash mongodb as you can see on the screen so we are importing that into the maven into the intellij idea with maven template uh, and uh, now it's loading that package uh, yep and building it for the first time uh, it's, it's uh, resolving all the dependencies and as you can see in the progress bar here so it's happening here my system seems to be somewhat slow although I have uh, I have made the I have uh, increased the video speed here otherwise this session would have gone to two to three hours after even uh, reducing yeah so now POM uh, the project is done and now the POM uh, we can see with all the dependencies we have added there now we are going to define the package structure so we are going to have a config package 
we are going to have controller package we are going to have model package uh, we are going to have repository we are going to have service package so these are these are the package structure we are going to have here config controller repository service model okay and uh, let's create the classes so uh, whenever I start a project I start with the model class so here since we are writing the blogger we have created a blog uh, blog model class so this blog model class and we are having nice looking uh, uh, annotations Lombok annotations which uh, and uh, the add document uh, is a MongoDB data uh, annotation which says we are going to use blog collection there and uh, the the ID at ID is also MongoDB related one data annotation and then we are writing blog ID we are going to have blog ID title and content uh, for the sake of simplicity I took only three otherwise there can be more like category also can be there uh, more, many uh, attributes can be there so yeah that is done let's write the repository class here so again as we have done in previously also so we need to annotate it at with uh, at repository and uh, blog repository should extend mongo repository and uh, blog and uh, the since our uh, our id is of type string so we need to give the type as string and that's it our uh, blog repository interface is done and since we are going to have the title also so we are going to write for title also the query we are going to have so find by title also we are going to have so that we will uh, write here we will uh, see this again find by title so this is the going to be the method and anyway uh, this uh, with somewhat different title I mean a big tit with title we can get many different uh, blocks also so that's why we are giving that and for this tutorial again we are uh, for this backend part of this tutorial we are referring how to do in Java for some part like uh, uh, just for reference we are uh, using it so as they have done so we are also doing that so yeah this is how we should be doing so uh, so we have added the title as parameter query parameter and uh, we, we, the, this zero question mark and zero this would be replaced with the parameter whatever we will be passing in the find by title okay so that's how it works now we are going to write the controller block controller and annotating it with address controller and uh, with this we will be writing all the crud we need to write so we are writing uh, we are using the uh, spring boot annotations get mapping put mapping delete mapping all those uh, mappings we will use so by default I mean when we say get mapping uh, by default all the uh, list of all blogs should be load should load so that's uh, what we are going to write here get all blogs and uh, what I am thinking instead of keeping it just slash we should be having slash all uh, so uh, that gives a more cl clarity uh, in terms of you know client of this particular service so just keeping a slash although it would be it is uh, legal I mean we can do that but it's always better to give a proper path so that's why I was thinking to give it slash all we will revisit that and now we are writing all the iBlock service that iBlock service is again it would be having all the methods which we are going to have so we are going to have method like create find by id find by title so find by id since our id is again string type i'll show you why we have taken it as a string ideal candidate for ids are long or integer but uh, here we have uh, we for the special for a special purpose we have uh, made it as a string and we will v visit i'll show that purpose also okay 
so we are having find all create find by title find all delete update blog yeah so these are the services we are going to write uh, and actually uh, the best way is always to delegate the things so now the service layer would be delegating to repository so we are not uh, calling repository directly in the service itself but we would be uh, uh, auto wiring a repository there in the service class and the service class would be having all those methods and that would be uh, actually doing the operation okay so that's what we are going to do here so we are writing the blog service which is implementing our i blog service and uh, actually it is calling the uh, mongodb uh, methods uh, which we have written so the if you if you can notice we have not written configuration till now okay why because i want to show one thing if we don't write the configuration then spring boot would do would consider the auto configuration for the default uh, and default dependency which we have added for mongodb and in that case what it will do is it will create one test db there in the mongodb uh, in the mongodb it will create one uh, database with name called uh, test db and under that it will create the collection called blog which we have you know given in that uh, model class while writing the model class we have given that yeah and now we are going to have uh, write, going to write all the service methods they are uh, simply you know delegating the task to the blog repository dot uh, methods provided from uh, by the mongodb uh, mongodb version of uh, you know spring data mongodb uh, which we have added in the pom.xml so that's what we are doing here uh, delete by id so we should be passing the id and then that way it should uh, delete what is wrong here okay so that should be by id not by title okay ah since it is void so uh, silly mistakes also <laughs> happen sometimes <laughs> so yeah we have rectified that and we have written our all the uh, all the delegate methods service delegate methods and now those delegate methods we will be calling from our controller so in controller we are going to have uh, private then we need to auto wire the iblock service to this particular uh, controller and uh, that's what we are doing and then this block service uh, as usual we will be calling on block service we will be calling each and every you know uh, method so for find since get all blocks so we will be calling find all and uh, internally find all will be calling repository dot find all as we have seen earlier also so same thing it's going to happen here and uh, yeah in application yaml we are going to say application yaml we are going to say get mapping okay before that we are going to have the post mapping for create and uh, since it is post mapping so we should be passing the uh, request body and in request body we are passing the blog of blog object or blog model okay and uh, one more thing as I told that time that why we chosen the string because UUID is a unique universal unique ID so we are going to use that UUID dot random UUID method uh, for generating the unique IDs for us so each and every blog of us would be having a unique universal unique uh, ID dot random UID so this would be generating some hex 
hash codes i mean uh, the unique ids basically so yeah and now slash update would be since update would be already having that id so it don't need we don't need with update we don't need that generation of uh, setting of that uuid uh, so we just copy pasted that uh, post mapping of create uh, shortcut is uh, command d in mac and uh, control d for duplicate in windows so by that we can achieve this duplication part uh, then we are writing the delete mapping and we are writing the delete mapping and passing the id for delete mapping also we need to pass the id and since uh, yeah it will need the written type as blog what is wrong here let's see what it says okay uh-huh uh-huh okay since it is void oh we reached till crud okay So we should be uh, we should be returning void and what we will do is we will annotate it with uh, response dot st uh, response status and we will pass https status dot okay so that way we would be getting a response saying okay uh, the record is successfully deleted based on this http status also we can add, uh, say like whether it is uh, our uh, request is performed or it went through or uh, successfully or not so that is what we are going to use in case of delete so that's pre pretty much of it i think uh, we are ready uh, for now we are skipping the config class we, uh, we are not going to write just keeping it for uh, uh, for reference further reference so this is yeah we bounce the server and uh, with bouncing server we as we have just shown we were able to you know connect to the mongodb and uh, we were able to connect to the mongodb and it was storing in test db now we are uh, writing in application dot yaml we are uh, going to create the auto configuration we are uh, um, overriding the auto configuration so what we are going to do as you have seen the other version it, while doing the uh, reactive mongodb it was uh, reactive abstract mongo client configuration but here since in vanilla form or in the normal uh, form we are going to have abstract mongo client configuration with uh, value at value we, we are reading from Mong, uh, from our yaml file the values of port and db name db name as you can see we have given uh, block db and uh, some uh, two methods we need to override one is for mongo client and the other is for uh, mongo template and get database name is also uh, one of the overrides we need to do that's what we are doing here uh, this reference link we are just following for configuration you know uh yeah so at configuration we are writing and uh, with that simple mongo template also we need to ha add it here mongo clients dot create uh, we should be doing the same way as it was done there and mongo client dot create is actually what it does is uh, it if you are aware of you know how the dbs loads uh, the driver details db driver details and all so i think that's what is happening there in, when we say mongo clients dot create so it is going to actually connect with that uh, for further use 
and now we are going to we are going to override the template part also uh, it should be mongo templates yes this one so now here we need to pass both the things database name and the factory or so we are going to say mongo template and here we need to pass mongo client Mo data ha database name and mongo client so mongo okay the order should be mongo client and get database name so that's how our template is ready uh, so yeah so that's how our mongo template is ready and we have annotated we we need to annotate these with at uh, bean annotation yeah and now yes yeah just for verifying with uh, multiple sources we are checking here also in the spring docs also how they have suggested okay okay yeah i think yeah i think it it should be fine i think it should be fine getting started accessing data with mongodb so we'll check here what it says I think we are fine. I think we are fine. I was thinking of the factory, but I think this also should be fine. Okay. Now let's uh, bounce the server and see if uh, everything is working or not. So we have created a collection, Postman collection, uh, with all the endpoints. to test the backend and yeah as i suggested earlier so we will be having slash all for uh, hitting find all okay so we are not going to have any endpoint with just slash so that way it's a good practice actually all the endpoint should be completely defined it should not be like a home or slash just slash and uh, they they there should not be assumptions so that's why we have defined that clearly and now as you can see blocks are created now we are trying to delete it delete uh, with the id as you can see the uh, unique ids which are which we are getting for the blocks yeah find all is also working and uh, let's see what issue it is says okay so now as you can see mostly it is uh, we are uh, storing in the db mongo db and uh, whatever endpoints we are trying it is uh, hitting to the database and storing that and reading back so and uh, while updating this is this is update which we are trying to do for one particular id and uh, id we are passing here we need to so this is what we are going to have here and we are going to update the title or content anything let's suppose content we are updating and by sending the content it should uh, it should do actually let's see why it is giving 405 slash update is fine request body is fine and uh, slash update it should be slash update 
why it is giving method not allowed method not allowed okay 405 okay guys this should be a put method okay this is a post method we are going to change it to put mapping ideally it should be a put method only but this should work actually yeah now we are searching with uh, title also so now title also is working so things are fine with this uh, get mapping put mapping and yeah this is uh, we are writing the endpoint for find by title earlier find by id was there now find by title and uh, at path variable we will be providing in url path variable we will be providing the title for this endpoint and uh, yeah and we will be calling uh, block service dot find by title this is actually hitting to that uh, to that particular endpoint uh, where we have you know uh, service method where we have uh, for which we have returned the query i mean the the, the query param right if you if you remember yeah so we have written all the all the endpoints we are writing for id as well by copy pasting the title one and we are adding blog in blog service also we have added one uh, uh, one more method so this is the beauty with beauty of da spring data and spring data mongo and you know all these uh, math, uh, all these uh, dependencies that it provides uh, crud uh, operations out of the box i mean you what we need to do is simply we need to implement or we need to uh, you know write our uh, repository interface and extend that uh, particular you know mongo repository or you know if it is data crud repository or all the methods are presented to you out of the box you don't need to you know uh, worry about these things so that's the beauty of uh, this uh, these dependencies these libraries actually okay so yeah uh, yeah by id should be returning one thing so one blog so that is what we are going to have here uh, id slash id this is going to be the endpoint url endpoint and i think we are very near to completing the backend part of the application uh, so let's rebounce the server and hope this time uh, all the endpoints would work and uh, we are opening mongodb compass so you can install mongodb compass it's very good uh, you know you, it provides very good ui for accessing mongodb as, as you can see uh, whatever request we have given from postman it's uh, created with that it is created in the mongodb and uh, yeah we are correcting the at query annotation uh, the the parameter we are passing it it all should be under that curly braces so that we have done now and yeah we have added the slf 4j at slf 4j lombok annotation for logging and uh, yeah that's pretty much of it now our server is up we are able to store the data uh, all our endpoints are working yes find title find by id is also working so we are copying the id and testing that and that is also fine we are able to create delete we are able to update uh, we are trying each and every uh, every operation and now we are creating a react app with npx create uh, react app uh, react app name name we are giving spring uh, react mongo uh, as you can see in the first line of the terminal uh, it is actually uh, creating the scaffolding i mean the skeleton
project skeleton for us and uh, adding all the dependencies related to react library as you all know like react is a library uh, so once we add that once we have everything it will uh, generate the source uh, folder with for us and all the de dependencies and everything would be under node modules and uh, as you know already we need to have nodes uh, node uh, installed already react install npm install and yeah it's generated now and uh, so we are we need to move to that particular package that is spring uh, react mongo now we are inside that and we are uh, simply saying uh, we are opening that package in the vs code also to show you the package structure generated for react okay so now we are opening vs code for that it is it has opened now as you can see under source we have app.js index.js and uh, in the app.js we are removing uh, the custom uh, we are customizing the app.js with simply saying hello world uh, h3 hello world and uh, So that's what we are going to do and we are going to simply start the server npm start so npm start will uh, you know build the project uh, build the react uh, app and uh, will uh, will start the server npm npm server node server on uh, list uh, on port number 300 uh, 3000 uh, we and uh, we should be listening at 3000 and uh, we will show that so our chrome is starting up jumping up and it will start I, yeah the chrome is started let's uh, let's give that and see actually the server is still uh, loading it's uh, still uh, starting up it has not yet started before that uh, i just want to sh uh, show one thing actually there is one chrome extension for you know developer tools react developer tools it's very good uh, ui i mean the developer tools uh, extension so it it shows the react components and the source code and the things whatever we can refer for any react app so since i'm already having a having it here so that's why it is showing already added so meanwhile yeah our server is started and we can see hello world so congrats our first hello world program on react is done now we are going to write the styling part and uh, doing the actual work we'll start from here so before to that before before to that we need to add few dependencies here which we are going to use in our project and first thing is uh, for presenting here we need to have bigger fonts so how how we can get the bigger fonts so in settings we need to go to that uh, there is one json file open uh, we need to do uh, shift uh, command p and it will open the command palette there we need to op give open settings.json and under that settings.json we need to add that terminal as you have seen on the screen yeah and now the terminal uh, font size on the terminal is increased yeah and uh, for editor fonts as you all might have already seen under settings text editor is already there so uh, we have increased the font there also and now we are uh, actually installing bootstrap bootstrap is very famous uh, you know very, fam very famous and old uh, library js javascript library for good style uh, styling we are going to have uh, on top of bootstrap css we are going to have react strap react strap is again a flavor of bootstrap with react and that is also another library we are going to use in this uh, react project apart from that we are so we are opening all those things here 
one by one so we are having react strap so what does their documentation says so we have open react uh, react strap it's opening meanwhile the other dependencies which we are going to use are react router dom and uh, the, the this is the react strap it's very beautiful uh, the components here in react strap are very you know eye catchy eye candy <laughs> things are here and now for react strap for react router dom uh, react router dom it's saying 404 let's uh, google again and uh, try to see it should be it should be it should be there and i know it's there actually so yeah we are have we will need react toastify also toastify is for showing you know toast messages like success info warning all those messages we can have with toastify and very uh, the the usage is also is very easy axios react axios we will be using for you know calling our backend you know uh, with axios we can simply uh, call all the http methods and pass the data if you might have worked in ajax it is its calls are almost like ajax so that's what axios we are having we are having react toastify we are having react strap and we are going to have react uh, router dom let's see this time it should open npm i think yes this is the one meanwhile our uh, our system is loading the dependencies installing the dependencies in the project into the project let's see support router dom so this is what router dom react router dom is basically a lib uh, by using which we can you know uh, we can define the links or routes routes means when when we say routes means from home page going from home page to the edit page to the add page to different different navigations right so that we we can do with router dom react router dom so we will see that uh, while defining the menus and that part this uh, particular api uh, api folder and this uh, base url is the url where actually our uh, backend is listening that location we are using throughout in in the project throughout so we are going to have two packages here one is two folders here one is components and the other is api service api as you as we have already seen now we are going in under components we will be having menu and uh, menu and uh, we will be having all blocks we will be having blocks so how we are designing this is first we are you know defining each and every component one by one uh, by simply having the most basic things then we will move forward and we will add functionality on top of that like that we will uh, work on okay so now we are adding the menu part again first we are targeting router uh, some css part and router part so under menu uh, again these list group raw these are all from react uh, strap so that is what we need to import here one by one and one more thing is uh, we should uh, I, I think we have already we might have shown earlier right uh, there is one uh, tool extension for this that is uh, simple react snippet yeah this is what i was talking about simple react snippet we should add this in we should install this in our uh, vs code this is basically for auto completion uh, let's see how it works i'm using it for the first time on suggestion of many youtubers 
on React. So let's see how it works. Card body inverse style. Okay. So this card is again uh, something uh, provided. Uh, the card components are also provided by uh, React Strap. So we are designing our app dot js. Uh, so under div, under our parent div, we are going to have card and uh, under card we are going to uh, styling it with uh, card body inverse and style uh, we are giving background color as and uh, the border color both as same and uh, we need to have toast container this toast container is basically for toastify so all our toast messages would be uh, would be presented in the under this toast container we need to add this whenever we are uh, using react toastify so yeah that container uh, we need to just for rendering the toast messages this will be needed okay so we have added that uh, depend imported that here and now we are just referring toastify again just to uh, double check our uh, how uh, it should be working so that's what we have added here now we need to add the browser router browser router is a component provided by uh, react router dome so we need to import that and we would say instead of browser router we would be using alias router we need to define the routes here in the app.js so that we are going to have so we need to uh, we need to keep all our uh, the complete uh, card in inside that uh, the complete content of the card inside that router uh, inside that router tag so that's what we are doing here card title okay we are going to change this instead of card title we are going to say yoast of blogger uh, we are having one application called yoast of on android uh, play store so same app for this uh, we are just considering the same name here so you can refer that as well sometime around you can you know watch that app also you can download it you can watch it it's uh, it's for sharing information share sharing uh, some content so it's a mobile app so you can try that one yeah so we are just trying to create a web version of it you can consider that with this uh, particular in this poc and uh, yeah we are structuring like this we are having container we are having raws and uh, as we have shown in the intro video so in in one column in one top row we will be having two columns and each column would be showing home and uh, add blog two items it would be showing so in column one menu and in second row it should be showing the so in uh, here in we should be having uh, first row we should be having menu second row we should be having all other routing so so that's what we are going to do here we are defining the routes we are having all blocks all blocks uh, here we are simply saying with all blocks we are simply saying slash and uh, route path we are saying add for component we can say like add block exact exact when we say exact it will match the exact path so as its name suggests that's what it does so we are having all blocks add blocks and update blocks so throughout our application we are going to have these three we will be playing around with these three pages or these three you know uh, these three pages yes pages or templates yeah so let's create uh, dummy templates with the same names so that's what we are doing here uh, and every every component we create we need to export that uh, so that all the other uh, uh, components inside the reactor uh, app uh, or react scope 
they should be able to import those things otherwise it w if we don't export it won't be able to add those or import those things into that particular js file okay so that's what we are doing we are writing all blocks.js we are writing add blocks.js we are writing blocks.js update.js all that we are doing and all the components we are exporting like export default and then component name so we here we are having add blocks most uh, at this point of time what we are simply doing is we are simply having card tag here and uh, yeah that's pretty much of it let's do it yeah so update blog dot js also we are adding same way same kind of operation i mean same way we need to create for everything so all the as i already said all the pages we are all the components we are going to define here so yeah those are the routes and for, for corresponding routes these are the components so these components are defined now under the menu.js as i told earlier we would be having two columns in one single row that is our top row in our top row we should be having links since we are we have defined the routes so we have to remember like if we are using react router dom the hierarchy would be routers and then routes and then links okay so this is actually what is happening here so once we have defined the router under that router we can anywhere we can use the link and since if you remember the hierarchy the root at the root in app.js we have our uh, router under that we are we can anywhere we can define the link so this menu is actually the child of that part that uh, root okay so that's what we are going to do so in menu we have uh, defined those things and now we are going to start the server again let's see how it renders the ui react script start so let's see how it renders so we as we can see it seems like our simple react snippet uh, extension is not working because so many imports we need to manually add it seems so let's add them manually one by one so it is showing under the app.js we need to add all these uh, dependencies import all these dependencies i mean components uh, and then under all blog add blog and update blog these are undefined so we need to basically import everything manually it seems yeah so that is what we are going to do here we are going to manually add each and every thing let's uh, save it so what deployment is working so it should show if everything is fine it should uh, show us the proper page there in the chrome in the browser so in each okay in each and every component we need to <laughs> import these dependencies manually shit it it's it, it if I don't know why that snippet uh, extension is not available or it's not working I don't know at this point of time so we need to manually do it so let's do it because if there is no other way other smart way then we have to 
do this kind of things so yeah but still okay our it seems our css and styling is not working here let's see what we can do uh, css style is styling is not working so there is a shortcut for that in chrome uh, in chrome uh, developer tool chrome extension we can click on uh, alt command j with alt command j as i told earlier also with alt command j it will show the full page with uh, in, with developer tools it will open the developer tools and it will show uh, the css and everything what the other way could be okay so we are analyzing it uh, things seems to be fine here home and ad blog with home it goes to slash ad blog it should go to slash ad the routes we have defined there so yeah and styling we are simply giving the background color and uh, you know styling part so gray and white that was a really good combination we have seen there in the intro yeah for both the things i think okay so yeah it should be colon not equals inside that uh, j javascript uh, object uh, sc folding yeah so css is done for this but still it is not taking that uh, list group item this list group item class is again under that uh, reactor uh, strap basically so since we are using link so that's why we have to pass the cl class differently separately under that class name with that class name attribute okay app.js also seems to be fine draw column this structure seems to be fine but okay yeah this this is something what we missed earlier we haven't defined the raw tags so raw tags also we are defined but nothing happened after even after that nothing happened so it seems the one of the watch outs as i mentioned earlier so css started misbehaving with us so let's let's go to our universal teacher that is google find out some solution on google so uh, components new component okay before to that uh, we are also going to have blog.js this is the card actually uh, where in all blogs we should be having the data loaded from uh, mongodb for all the blogs and each blog should be showing this card under this card so data would be shown uh, with under this uh, blog card so that we are defining here for now we are simply keeping the most basic things here card but definitely uh, when we revisit it we will rectify the things and we will uh, add the toppings so this is the vanilla thing we are following this particular styling uh, card styling so this you can check actually in the in the link uh, react strap link under component section you can find card and this is the styling we are following from there and we are adding it so with under cardboard card we can have card body so under card body we will have the complete uh, structure of you know structure of this card so under card body we are going to have card title then we are going to have since it is for the home page uh, for single single card so it will be having the title content and uh, edit and delete button 
which we are going to define here excuse me so this blog property this blog object we would be getting from uh, all blogs and uh, from all blogs uh, uh, we would be getting this blog property and uh, with uh, by dot we can access the you know other uh, fields of that blog like blog dot title blog dot content we will be getting that here like this and uh, what else I think we need to have something more and card title card text these are basically labels uh, labels so these labels are again uh, with uh, some specific CSS they have added and uh, yep under container we need to have links or uh, since we are have using uh, router links so we need to have the class name as button button primary so our link will be shown as a you know instead of a ref href it would be shown as a button primary button and delete would be shown as a that is that will also be shown as a button and this button is again on top of uh, react strap basically this react strap library is internally using bootstrap so that's why if you remember we have added the bootstrap first installed the bootstrap in our project yeah and now under blog.js react strap we are doing then import react okay this is also important for each and every component we need to have this react import react and then as per our uh, defined scheme ui scheme we need to you know keep a con for consistency we are adding this card body inverse color info for each and every component ui component so that we are doing here And now under this all blocks we need to define the we need to define the blog object and that uh, set blocks will be se setting that state of that object blocks object so blocks is an array so that we need to define under this use stats uh, use states again these are provided by react use state use effect these are the methods actually for setting up the states state and uh, setting up uh, calling the lifecycle methods use effect and here uh, we are simply checking if the blocks that is our array its length is greater than zero we are calling the ternary operator if you are familiar with uh, java so you might have used this ternary operator in many places so condition we are just checking the condition if it is fine i mean condition is true we are going we are calling uh, our array dot map and we are passing single item that is our blog and we are saying uh, rendering the blog uh, component here and passing this this blog data to there in our actual blog component here and if if the condition is false we are simply saying no blogs available so that's what we are doing here and uh, since we are yeah and we are importing the, the whatever we have added so those components we are importing here uh, that seems to be fine but still the CSS and styling is not working here but we will move forward we will initially set up the project and then we will revisit we will do all the other things 
and then we will revisit because I think that won't be a bigger issue we, we will find it out meanwhile we will set up the things other things like blog.js so we are passing the blog object there from all blogs all blogs component we are calling blogs component there and then we are passing the object from there that object we are reading in the blogs and uh, now we are uh, now we are defining the other things like add blog update blog in the add blog so i mean it's a very common uh, reiterative things what we are doing here so uh, instead of me talking all about these i will mute myself and meanwhile you can enjoy the background music with the code So we are actually analyzing the code and in react uh, strap we found something like this so it seems we need to manually import uh, the css into our uh, index dot uh, index.js so we are opening index.js and we are trying that importing manually bootstrap dot min dot cs yippee now finally we are able to <laughs> load the card proper card and uh, as we can see the hard coded element is also shown here so yep routings are working as expected since we don't have anything in the add uh, blog and edit blog so update blog so that's why it is not showing so let's do that now okay so So for add blog and for update blog we will be actually uh, posting the data to the server so we will be using form objects there so that's what we are going to use uh, inside this card body and as uh, you might be already knowing with form object we should be having submit event so that's what we are uh, going to have here so all our uh, form content would go inside this form tag these form tags starting and ending and for now for time being we are simply saying hash uh, just while while defining the structure of the form uh, so we are having form on submit hash and class name display 2 we are uh, just using some guessing work here so how it should look so we are doing that and the input in placeholder we are saying simply saying the message saying the enter the blog title here and on change also in other, is another event that we will define later for now we are just uh, keeping it as it is and since we are using text area so important attribute for text area is ROS ROS tense means it would uh, it would give the height of that text uh, area 10 10 rows height it would uh, give that to that text area that's what we are doing here and uh, yeah that's pretty much of it and uh, we need to have containers as we have seen earlier also in previous component so here we are defining the container which is also again as uh, with our all UI components we, this is also from react strap container inside this container we will be having 
this is add blog so we will be having two buttons here one is post blog and the other is clear so we are adding as i told earlier also it is not working the snippet uh, extension was not working for me so i need to manually import every component and that is really really disappointing because uh, you know if it if, if it would be intellij idea these are basic things which are out of the box available in intellij idea uh, we don't need to add any extensions or nothing but again that's why intellij is uh, very very you know heavy also but vs code also is good but sometimes some uh, extensions give such issues so that's that's the thing so yeah our form is ready so with uh, that or uh, with that structure which we have defined and as we can use these buttons primary secondary these are actually bootstrap buttons only but as i said uh, react strap is on top of bootstrap so a, a version of bootstrap only for react uh, apps so we can see all this we can you know use browse to all the components of uh, react strap so in buttons also the we are having so many versions of those buttons so we are going to use mainly uh, primary and warning and danger for danger for delete yeah beautiful now now we are getting some what designing part of our application now similar since uh, since our add uh, blog and uh, update blog are almost similar uh, ideally we should be writing single component but just for the sake of clarity and sake of clarity and avoiding complexity i have kept two separate components one is for add blog and the other is for update blog otherwise we could have achieved uh, Uh, by a uh, single component also this functionality we could have achieved by single component but you know it will be total ma mess up so instead of you know doing more on that part we have defined two separate components and yeah now the complete routing here ends the routing part we are able to route from all the links and buttons yeah and so we are going to uh, thoroughly for thoroughly testing we are simply adding few more dummy blocks so yeah it will show like this and it's lo really looking cool uh, yep with all blocks here we need to use effect use effect is basically uh, you know this particular event will be called uh, we can make use of use effect function uh, for life cycle events when we say life cycle events there are uh, mount mounting is one rendering is second like that on load if you guys have used uh, again jquery or ajax you might be uh, very well aware of this in uh, ready ready function was there in jquery so we can similar way this use effect is there so for uh, you know while loading this particular thing will be called and if we will not give that uh, comma and uh, array parameter then it it will it will not it will show that re refresh uh, refreshing effect so if we will give this then refreshing event effect won't be there we are adding the axios so okay so what we are trying to do now is we are targeting our first communication with our backend so fingers crossed we should be adding the base url here and we should be adding axio we we have added the axios dependencies 
and now get all blocks from server this method is actually calling axios.get and then passing the endpoint and it should hit here this is correct now and as I said earlier also like as in Ajax or uh, the previous uh, JavaScript versions here also we can uh, make use of uh, dot then and, and then is a promise so if if the uh, if we get a proper response then the ref response part would be executed if we get any kind of error from backend we would be error part would be executed so that's how this uh, promise structure works so we are writing arrow fu uh, functions for both of them and what we are going to do is we are going to raise toast uh, from toastify this will be listen this would be listen under that toast container we have added in app.js yeah so it will be rendered under that For the whole application, it will be rendered there only. All the tools would be rendered there. So we are going to say for error case, we are simply saying something went wrong on the server side. We are looking at it, a good message uh, to the client. Yeah. What is wrong? What is wrong? Okay. This slash all should be inside that tilde again. This uh, particular symbol, tilde symbol, is above. Uh, it's it's present to uh, above the tab key. Okay, in all the keywords. So we need to keep our uh, URLs under that uh, tilde and start tilde close, like that. So now, okay, there is some issue with the CSS for our toasts. So what could be the issue? We have even even we have imported that also here, toast also here, but still that issue persists. Let's see what uh, they say here. It is this is how we have added also. Okay, let's uh, let's see whether we are getting the data or not. First, uh, let's focus on the communication part. If it uh, it happens, we will see this uh, CSS second. <coughs> All blocks. We are going to hit there. Okay, it is hitting, but to show you one important concept, I'm going to. Uh, stopping the server and restarting it uh, I have added uh, one annotation there which is important here as you can see now uh, now we are getting that uh, failure this failure I wanted to show you actually uh, this is coming because of cross uh, cross site referencing basically uh, cross origin sorry cross origin we need to enable cross origin in our Spring Boot application. Then only it will be, it can uh, listen the request from outside world. When I say outside world, outside applications. Like React is an outside application for us, for Spring Boot. So to listen uh, to React's uh, communication to or to communicate to, with React, we need to have this at at cross origin annotation see we have enabled that and started the server now we can see the current blocks in under the data under the data uh, attribute of response part okay so that's how we are able to see now we will go further we will s and when we do set blocks so what does set blocks do set blocks will set all the data response into that uh, into the blocks object which we have in our all blocks uh, you know component and now we are left with this uh, these ugly looking uh, toasts 
it is rendering properly but i don't know what is happening i think for this also we may need to add the styling part manually how we need to rectify this we need to google on it we could not see sometimes it happens like the solution is in front of us but we can we are not able to you know and that happens when we get panic in the panic situation so let's see if it is not working or in the then the last resort would be google so we will see if anybody else earlier faced this kind of issue i think it would be some smaller issue only let's see we'll google it the last resort of the word is google because when nothing works google should work <laughs> so we are opening that with that okay it says this uh, styling part this we have done i don't think with this it would work let's see how it happens so we have put it here saving but say after saving we are refreshing it nothing happened these are still there so we will remove this also we'll remove this auto config it should auto close it i mean nothing of the css are working for this toastify so yeah so it was basically uh, we have manually imported the css into the component and now it is working and now we are defining the delete button so on click of delete button we should be passing the blog id and uh, in, in th this we are doing under the blog.js component and the end point for delete is uh, delete mapping and delete slash id so that's what we are going to do here and uh, delete blog would be this uh, blog object uh, in line number uh, 5 would be having uh, javascript object would be having the complete details of uh, the blog uh, which we are getting from all blogs okay so that detail we are using making use of that we are you know calling uh, the particular uh, url endpoint this blog id should be under that in, inside the delete blog actually we should be getting this blog id so that we will be we will pass here because uh, there uh, in in the reference part we have actually passed blog dot blog id there so we will be making use of that so toast we are simply writing to show the you know info of uh, blog id delete saying deleted successfully so since we are passing blog id there we we should be able to you know show the blog id here also and uh, as we have already seen axios it should have two promises if it is passed then what to do if it is failed then what to do so we are showing keeping a consistency so everywhere we are showing the same error message so client would only come to know like okay there is something 
uh, went wrong in behind the scenes i mean at the back end and they can come to know okay so as i said yeah blog id we need to pass from there and that is what we are going to make use of here and uh, now and now when we click on delete yeah it is showing the message of delete but this page also should should be refreshing but since uh, that page is not refreshing and it is only refreshing the array while loading at the load part so what we need to do is we need to we need to write for an update method okay and that met update method would be called from the delete uh, buttons function let's see that how we are going to achieve that so we need to go to this and here yes here in this all blogs uh, component blog uh, where we are having the reference for blog at line number 40 we need to pass one update method and that update method would be update blogs this update blogs would be actually uh, updating that blogs array referring to that blogs array and uh, you know modifying that updating that blogs array we are writing arrow functions for this arrow function for this and this arrow function would be actually checking for this array's uh, size of that array i mean uh, each and every element will be having so blog id we are getting from there and while setting we we will be actually setting uh, the blog again and again whenever delete happens so whichever blog id is deleted apart from that all the others we need to show here so we are checking if instead uh, i mean apart from that deleted one we we should be showing everything so that is what we are setting again in the array so set blocks would be setting that array without that particular deleted id so that's what we are passing and we are listening uh, we are passing that update method here into the blogs.js component and that we are referring with the update uh, note the name of the method it is update not update blogs because in the component we are passing as update okay now it is deleting and uh, update is also happening so now we are left with add blocks and edit blocks so for add blocks what we need to have again we need to in this component we need, we, we are going to have state that is block state so block object would be as we this as we have seen earlier also single block object would be having id title and content so that single block object we are referring here and uh, now uh, we are going to define the handle form handle form method under that handle form method we would be actually uh, getting the param and we are going to have uh, post data method that post data method is actually calling making the axios request axios uh, create request for this for this sake so we are saying param dot prevent default uh, as it's uh, as it reads it will prevent the default values or signals the operation so we, as you can read it there yeah and now we are going to write the post data method here so post data method we are going to write here and inside post data we, as we have seen earlier also axios and uh, in axios we should be passing since it is uh, it is add so we are going to say that base url slash create and since it is post request so we need to pass the data also let's see uh, what it says create and it is a post mapping so 
should be passing and as i shown uh, earlier also uuid we are going to consider as uh, unique id for our blogs toast is again it is the same uh, thing which we have seen earlier also base error in error also we will do the same thing choose to error error would be showing that error so now this seems to be fine error also we made uh, we ensure the consistency here and post position is also top center <coughs> yeah i think uh, i think we are done with adding part we should be let's see what error it is showing base url okay so since base url is in a different package itself so we need to import it manually so it's in it's under service slash service api dot js so yeah now it is added now we are going to test it with uh, simply saying something so we are saying our promotion <laughs> promotion of uh, or we we are saying the message as our promotion so we are saying please support our work like share subscribe by subscribing us <laughs> so we are doing our promotion here and sharing and liking and providing the feedback also like and comment to inspire us yeah your support always inspires us so we have added that now the blog is added let's see why it is not shown there okay so we missed an important information that on submit handle form method we need to add it here so we missed this thing literally so on change and uh, handle form we need to add so on change we already seen like set blog will be called on change and javascript method uh, set blog will be called and uh, we are uh, for target setting the target uh, we this is this would actually be inside the arrow function and from that arrow function we should be getting the param or uh, in case of we can have e or we can have param we are going to name it as param so e dot target dot value when we say that e dot target dot value so it will be set inside that title blog dot title so that is what this set blog is doing so same we will we will repeat for uh, content also so that's what we are doing here same we are repeating for content yeah now i think it should be fine uh, our promotion please share like and subscribe to our work <laughs> we will we will make more exciting videos yes that definitely we are going to do like this and we are posting it something went wrong so what is that okay okay i think uh, it is okay i think uh, since it is a post request it is expecting the data request body request body blog object it would be expecting actually so i think yeah i think what we need to have is i'm just copying that text again so this should go in into the database so that's why okay we will repeat the things load it uh, 
as i was telling yeah uh, so we need to have the data comma data we need to pass for post or put so we need to say comma data here now it will definitely work so add blog we are pasting the things and here we are seeing our promotion post blog ep it is now in adding and as we can see like home on home we are able to see the added blog that's it now we can add more blogs here now the leftover part is uh, update part which is leftover as well as very very tricky so please pay attention for that because that's a combination of you know loading the uh, based on id as well as updating so that's what we are going to cover also so in today's uh, communication our prime minister modi has given some points so we are simply taking the those points and putting in into the blog simply a, sim a, a small blog we are having so title as pm modi's search uh, speech on covid and posting it yeah it is posted successfully here we are having now two blogs so delete functionality is done update we are going to do now and as i said for update we need to do two things one we need to write the post or put call and the other we need to you know show that also so for on change we are doing similar way as we have done for add we are setting the set blocks we are calling the set blocks which sets the state blog state of this uh, component yeah title as well as uh, component uh, as well as content so same we are going to do here we are going to have const blog set blog similar way use state we would be using it's a single object single blog object and similar way we are going to have handle form handle submit or handle form whatever name you want to give you can give but please make it i mean uh, please make sure like you are referring what you have declared <laughs> like this yes so now as i said post data we have copied that and now we are just changing the type from post to uh, it should be put axios update data should be fine and it should be these things are also common actually so we are changing the message now base url these things are fine post data so we are saying put data instead of post data we should be saying put data let's replace okay so now we have put data and uh, yep yeah. and axios dot put data we would be using axios also we have already imported yeah so now somewhat uh, that simple i don't know how suddenly that started working x uh, that uh, simple si simple react snippet tool kit or extension is now working seems so now on change is done and since it is a uh, update part so when we when this page would load it should actually show show the current value so that we can achieve with this value uh, attribute so this value attribute we are going to make use of it here blog dot title and similarly we can have blog dot uh, content so we are having title and content both and 
button group is fine I mean button container is fine so this is the uh, posting part I mean reading and posting part now we need to actually write the loading part so now we will write the loading part uh, this message I have added just for saying like posting the data to server after uh, posting this data to server simply and this I am saying loading the data from server from our uh, by ID from server by passing our ID and that is what we are going to have here uh, so yeah these errors also will resolve these errors are because of you know base URL as I said uh, our snippet tool is not able to because it is in some other uh, different path different uh, folder so it was not able so now we are one by one we are uh, adding all the imports whatever are shown as an error in so now it is loading the UI so on click of edit it is loading update blog on update blog we should be reading that to blog ID so we are seeing props so we we are going to access the blog details by props okay so we would be saying the method name would be simply get blog from server by ID okay and then in this we are expecting uh, we are making the call to axios so it should be get call because loading the data from backend uh, by passing the ID so that is what we are saying slash ID base URL slash ID and then we are passing prop dot location here we need to pass that okay in then okay so face and ID ID we will pass later on uh, as you can I have to show something here like how the ID would come uh, here because we are coming from all blogs we are clicking on edit button and then we are coming to this all blogs so that I want to show here how we would be actually coming okay so these things should be fine now we are going to and one more thing is this use effect lifecycle method I already told right so on mount it will be called and this this will internally call our method and uh, this comma and uh, then array empty array this will ensures like the page would not refresh uh, I mean it won't show any symbols of refresh but internally the page would refresh that's the beauty of react actually so that we achieve by this use effect and then in uh, yeah update we are passing that update and uh, now in this edit button in this edit link we need to pass instead of simply saying the path we are going to say a javascript variable javascript object with path name and param path name would be slash uh, what is that slash uh, i think slash update yes slash update is the path which we defined in, in app.js route defined routes so there we have defined this and in param we are simply saying blog dot blog id so whatever blog uh, dot blog id is there we are passing that to this particular component that is our uh, inside our update blog actually and that we are going to access through props dot location dot param so when we say props dot location dot param we are loading this and now now I think we are uh, very close to completion so edit our promotion say something so what we are going to say here is again uh, some 
funny message should update and target should update and target 100k yeah 100k subscribers yes come on guys if uh, funny videos or uh, uninteresting things can get so many views why can't uh, study material can get <laughs> so yeah it is also updated and now when, when we clicked on delete it is also deleted proper messages are shown shown properly and uh, yeah we are saying some message in our pms blog so the message is when the going gets tough the tough gets going so here ends another uh, playground session and as we promised the key moments would be available in the description section with time frames so yeah that's it uh, for this session i hope you would have enjoyed this uh, session please provide us your feedback thanks for watching again and don't forget to like share and subscribe to our work till next uh, playground session bye bye and have a nice life